Now today we're going to play with a new Cisco IOS controller on a uh, 3850 switch. So what's important to know about the new uh, Cisco controller switch is that there's a couple different modes that you can set them into. You can set them in a mobility agent where they uh, kind of phone home to another controller or you can set them as a mobility controller. So today what I'm going to focus on is uh, configuring this switch to be a mobility controller which means the APs connect directly to it and you configure uh, the WLANs directly on it. Um, I'm not uh, too familiar with the new architect so I'm not going to go into details on on how to set it up as a mobility agent. Um, as, of, as of the time of this video I'm not seeing a real good reason why I I would use it in my current uh, role, so I'm not too interested in it. But uh, anyway, so we're going to set this thing up as a uh, mobility controller. So the first thing you do, I, this is a fresh switch, so I uh, just rebooted it. Um, and it's prompting for the initial uh, config dialog. I'm going to say no to that. I'm going to terminate the auto install. So two things that I, I found that are kind of important is that you need to make sure that you have the right licenses. So when you first get this thing, uh, do a show license on it and uh, make sure that you have it configured correctly. It's kind of slow here. All right, so what you... What you need is a minimum of IP base, uh, and then you need to have AP licenses available. So we're good to go on this switch. Uh, you just have to make sure that you have uh, IP base or better. Um, LAN base won't work. And if you don't have any uh, AP licenses on here, the APs will try to join, and it will refuse them uh, with an error message that database uh, database uh, entry can't be created so keep that in mind now the first thing to do when you get one of these things and you run through the config guide that is currently posted um, it has a section on how to get the APs to join the controller what it doesn't tell you is that you have to configure it um, to be a mobility controller um, first before APs will start to join to it and the directions that I saw online actually did not have uh, the correct details on how to do this. Um, the config guy that I saw told you to enter a uh, wireless uh, mobility controller and then IP and then put in the IP address. So in this case, we'll do 10.10.0.2. And then after it showed that command being entered, you were uh, you were supposed to get another command that says that okay, now it's a mobility controller. We you know, save your config and reboot. As you can see, that didn't happen uh, when I entered that command. So what I found you have to do um, is enter the wireless mobility controller command. And see now, now it's telling you, you know, please save your conf uh, config and reboot. So let's go ahead and save that. And then reload it. Now I will say it takes a long time for this thing to reboot, so we'll be back in a minute. All right, now the switch is back up. So we need to verify that it's uh, switched it to mobility um, controller mode. So the command is show wireless mobility summary. And as you can see, the role is uh, mobility controller now. Um, originally it said mobility uh, agent. So. We're, we're in good shape. Now, one important thing to look at in this command uh, also is the IP address. 
of uh, the controller's management interface that the APs are going to talk to. And right now it's a 169, 254.1.1. Now, if it took the command that they say to use in the reference guide or uh, config guide, it, it probably would have filled it out here. However, um, like I said, I couldn't get it to work. So Now, I'm going to go ahead and start configuring the switch. Um, I've got a couple things on here that uh, I like to do. Um, just on you know, whatever uh, whatever I'm working on. So, like this stuff with the time zone, server stamp, etc. I'm going to paste it in. Uh, AP, I have a, a DHCP for, uh, pool for the APs so that I can do this whole test uh, with the switch without having a DHCP server or anything else. Um, I also went ahead and threw in a uh, DHCP pool for uh, the clients so we can you know, try to test a client. Um, VLAN 50 is going to be for guest. VLAN 10 is going to be the management. Uh, management port. Okay, port 1 uh, is where I have this AP plugged into. Uh, I just went ahead and configured it for the management VLAN. Now I will say that the switch port mode access you don't have to enter it. Uh, it'll let you just enter uh, the description and the, uh, the switch port access VLAN. Um, and it will actually pass traffic over it. However, it seems like uh, the controller, uh, the iOS controller, actually verifies that the port it's coming from is a switch port. So if you don't configure this, the AP will join and then it will drop. Um, and, and give you some error message on the, the CapWAP tunnel. So you got to have this uh, entered. Um, also, I noticed when I was when I was labbing it up, I had a uh, APs on uh, a different switch that I was linked to, and it would it was giving me errors that uh, the APs from the uplink that were coming over the uplink uh, weren't in uh, switch port mode. So just keep that in mind. You definitely have to have it. Even though typically it's not really required, uh, make sure you put it in there if you want your AP to join. Uh, then I have a couple SVIs uh, for the APs, so the DHCP will get handed out on those VLANs. Uh, default gateway, not, not that this stuff really matters. I'll just paste it in there anyways. Uh, some logging synchronous, so we don't have error messages. Now, what's important when we get down to uh, this, this was the original command that uh, we had entered to put it into the mobility or MC mode. Um, this, this is actually going to uh, call out um, which interface it's going to use for that mode. So once I set this command, uh, when we rerun this, it's actually going to show this IP address up, up here. So. Um, then I have a WLAN, uh, this is going to be the profile name, the first one, the WLAN ID, and then the SSID, uh, the client VLAN is going to be 50, uh, disable the uh, enterprise WPA, which is the default, and then set it to uh, WPA uh, pre-shared key and then uh, password so and then you can no shut it so that's pretty much it I'm gonna paste this in real quick and let's see what happens here alright so now we've got it in there we're gonna rerun that uh, show wireless mobility summary and you can see now that it's using uh, the VLAN 10 interface um, for its controller address. Do a quick show run, make sure. It looks like it got everything.
So you can do a show WLAN. Uh, what is it? Summary. It'll show you your SSID that you have configured, which is showing up, and then a uh, you can do a show AP join stats summary. We'll show you that your AP is joined. So looks like we've uh, we've got the AP uh, joined. Let's see, uh, unfortunately, I'm using. Uh, Parallels on OS X, so I can't uh, use the wireless card in Windows 8 here. But uh, let me pull it up on my phone. Let's see if testing 1234 is being broadcasted. And I'm not seeing the SSID show up on my phone, so. One of the commands that they have you run is a no, no broadcast. Uh, command, or actually, I should say, it should be a broad to enable broadcast. Let's go back into this interface. This WLAN interface. And there it is. Broadcast SSID. I think this is a default, so that might not be my problem. Some commands in there that are good. Status, show AP status. I'll show you some status. Oh, okay. See, this AP I have uh, in SE Connect mode, which is why it is not broadcasting. Um, it's not broadcasting. So to change the mode, you go AP and you have to type in name and then whatever you have the AP name, which I renamed it. And then. Uh, It's going to be yep, mode and then local. All right, so let's give that a minute. It's going to reboot and we'll see if uh, it starts broadcasting. All right, so it looks like the AP is back up. I'm going to run those commands again to uh, show you that it's it's joined again. So those commands that I was talking about that are good to see what's up with the APs are is going to be the show uh, AP status. Good command. And then show AP summary. Um, you know, this kind of tells you what's going on with it. And it, as you can see here, it is back in local mode. So show WLAN should sh show up. Sorry, show WLAN uh, summary. All right, it's up. So now I I should be able to see it uh, broadcasting, uh, testing one two three four. And I do see it now. Looks like it's connected. It's trying to get an IP, and it got an IP. So. Now I should be able to do a show wireless client. Summary. And yep, so I do see a client, one client, uh, one I'm connected at, and uh, which AP. So that's that's that. Of course, uh, you'll want to save your config. And that's uh, now it's saved. So it's up and running. It wasn't it wasn't that hard to get it to, to work. Uh, I spent a lot of time figuring out the AP license uh, causing problems, and then 
uh, the config guide just not stating the right information on how to configure the configure the switch as a uh, as an uh, MC. So once you get that figured out, it's pretty easy to set up a base config. Now there's nothing special. There's no AP groups or anything crazy like that. Um, I might go into more detail on some of those settings after I play with them uh, a little bit more. Uh, I did mention, or at, as you saw in the video, this AP was in uh, SE Connect mode. I did test that. It does work. Um, however, you can't get, or at least I can't find anywhere where you can get the, um, the NSI key. So what you end up having to do is you have to log into the AP itself and do a show spectrum um, summary, I believe, and it will give you the key. So, yep, that's how that works. And uh, if you want to configure the username and password, you can do it from the controller. Uh, it's with one of those AP um, configs or, or commands. So, AP35. O2 dash E and then you can do SSH or uh, Telnet if you want to enable that. Um, you also can set the username if you do the uh, management user um, or else it's just the default Cisco uh, capital C Cisco password to get into it uh, and I think that's it uh, also another thing to note is if you want to make uh, static uh, channel changes or power changes uh, you use the same AP and then the name uh, with the actual AP name and by default uh, the AP name is um, AP and then the MAC address uh, you can change the name here, the name command. Now I will say that one thing that's a little confusing is if you want to configure the radio, so you want to change uh, the channel, right? So if you go to set the channel and let's say uh, 161 is what we want to set it. You actually have to disable the radio first, which is kind of new. Um, so what you do is you shut it down, right? So you would think, you know, if you're old school iOS, that you could just uh, know out this whole command, and then it would no shut it. But that's not how it works. And if you look above here, there's actually no enable um, anywhere to turn that radio back on. So what you have to do is you actually, um, after, after the AP name is where you would put that no at. And now the radio, you know, is coming back up. So. Anyways, hope you liked the video. Thanks.